In this problem, I want to determine the value of uh, shear stress at point H. Also, I would like to determine the value of shear stress at point K and compare the solution. So, uh, the basic equation that I need to use again is shear stress is VQ over IT, and I need to determine these four parameters one by one. Um, I will start with shear force. Um, This is a simply supported beam. Each reaction carries a half of the load. So reaction A has a force of P over 2. The same is true for reaction C. So if I want to draw the shear diagram for this beam, on the very left end, it goes up by P over 2, and it would be constant. At the middle, there is a jump. It goes down by a value of P. Again, it would be constant. And at the very right end, that goes to zero, that shows the calculation is correct. So the value of shear force at section AA, which the problem asked me to determine the shear stress at that point, would be equal to P over 2. P is 12 kips. That means the value of shear force is equal to 6 kips, which is equal to 6,000 pounds. The next parameter that I want to determine is moment of inertia. This is a rectangular section, and the moment of inertia is simply calculated by base times height cubed over 12. The base here is 6 inch, height is 15 inch. That gives me moment of inertia equal to 1687.5 inch to the fourth. The next parameter that I need to determine is Q. Remember, I does not depend on the point of interest. That would be constant everywhere for this section, but Q depends on what is the point of interest. And it's calculated from this equation, A times D. To determine what is A and D, I need to determine what is the point of interest. Let me redraw the section that I have here. The point of interest in this problem is H, which is located 3 inch below the top surface of beam and this is the axis that passes through the centroid of the entire section. So what I need to determine is that I need to determine the area of this hatched shape. The area is simply 3 inch by 6 inch, by 6 inch. and D in this equation is the distance of centroid of this subsection to the centroid of the entire section. So that is D. And this D, because both entire section and the subsection that I have here are rectangular, the D would be 15 over 2, which is location of the centroid of section, the distance of centroid of the entire section from top minus 3 over 2, which is distance of the centroid of the subsection from top. Now I will plug the values into Q. So A is 6 times 3, and D is 15 over 2 minus 3 over 2. That gives me Q equal to 108 inch cubed. The last parameter that I need to determine is T, or the thickness of the section. Here, the thickness is the thickness of the cut section. Again, I will use blue dashed line to show that. So this dashed line shows the thickness of the cut section, which is equal to 6 inch. So T is equal to 6 inch. Now I plug these parameters into the shear stress equation. V is 6,000 pounds, Q is 108, I is 1687.5, and thickness is 6 inch. That gives me the value of shear stress at this point equal to 64 
pound over square inch, which is equal to PSI. That's the answer of this problem. Now let me determine the value of shear stress at point K. What I have determined is the value of shear stress at H. Now let me determine the value of shear stress at K. I should follow the same procedure. So let me see what is the same and what is changing. The shear force at section AA is the same, so that is equal to 6,000 pounds. The moment of inertia is not changing. It doesn't depend on the point of interest. So that would be again 1687.5 inch to the fourth. But Q is changing and T may change as well. So let me first talk about Q. Q for this problem depends on the point of interest. So let me read through this element and determine how much is the value of Q for point K. The point of interest now is located one inch above the bottom surface of this beam. So to determine area and D, distance from centroid, I can go ahead and consider this hatched area. The area of this hatched shape is 6 by 1 and the distance of centroid of this subsection to the centroid of the entire section is calculated 15 over 2 minus 1 over 2. I can go and plug the values into this equation and determine how much is first moment of area for this shape. So Q would be A times D. A is 6 by 1 and D is 15 over 2 minus 1 over 2. That gives me 42 inch cubed as Q for this problem. Okay, some of you may ask this question. Why I didn't consider the area above that uh, dashed line? I actually can consider that area. So let me use another color to hatch that area and determine the Q for that one and see what's the difference between these two shapes. Here I'm using red color to show that hatched area. The area in this case would be 14 by 6 and the distance of centroid of this subsection from the centroid of the entire section is calculated from this equation 15 over 2 minus 14 over 2. Now let me calculate the value of Q for this red uh, hatched shape. Area is 6 by 14 and D is 15 minus sorry 15 over 2 minus 14 over 2. And that gives me the same value for Q if I ignore the sign. So again, it doesn't matter if I consider the area above the point of interest or below the point of interest. They should give me the same value or the same magnitude of Q for this problem. So I can go for both of these shapes. Remember, this is the point of interest. The thickness in both cases is similar to the first point and that is equal to 6 inch. Now I'm ready to go and plug the values into this equation and determine how much is the shear stress at point K. Shear force is 6,000 pounds. Q is 42 inch cubed. Moment of inertia is 1687.5 and the thickness is 6 inch. If I plug the values, that gives me the shear stress at this point equal to 24.9 PSI and that's the final answer of this problem.